Now that you understand what left-leaning red-black binary search trees are, let's talk about why they're useful. So let's start by discussing the search operation. If I want to find something in an LLRB, it is easy. It's exactly like finding something in a regular binary search tree. In fact, it is just a binary search tree. So for example, if I want to find x, I look at the root and I compare x to w. x is bigger, so we go right. x is smaller, so we go left. x, we found it. The fact that this node, or that this link is red, has no impact whatsoever on our contains operation. It is literally exactly the same as before. Okay, so now that we understand what search is, let's try and think very carefully about the space of possible valid LLRBs. And the reason is, this will allow us to have a good understanding of the performance of our LLRBs. So this is a tricky problem. I want you to tell me of these four, which are valid LLRBs. That is, they have a one-to-one -one correspondence with some valid 2-3 tree. Now this is a hard problem, really hard in fact, uh, because it assumes that you have perfect understanding of the B trees lecture. But give it a shot, see what you come up with, pause the video, and uh, try it out. And the way I'd encourage you to solve this problem is draw the equivalent 2-3 uh, tree and say, is it valid? So this leftmost example here, uh, this tree, if you made it into its equivalent to three tree, it would be actually invalid. So the reason it's invalid is because of the fact that A, B, and C all being together, that's a four node. So even though this is uh, a tree which only has black and red links and all the red links lean left, it is not a valid LLRB because there's no way you could get this two three tree. If you had this 2, 3 tree, the B would immediately split and move up. So this is not a valid state. It happens temporarily, but we don't consider it to be a valid 2, 3 tree. And so this up here is not a valid LLRB. Okay, uh, how about this next one? So this one's a little tricky, uh, but if we look at the corresponding 2, 3 tree, uh, we would get G as the root, AB as the left child, X as the right child, and then C is the only child of AB. And there's a few problems here. Most fundamentally to me is that it's not balanced. Remember that in a two, three tree, every leaf must be the same distance from the root. But here X has distance one and C has distance two. We actually have another problem, uh, which is that A, B should have three children, but there's only one child. So that's another big problem. But to me, the number one thing that jumps out is that it is not balanced. And so yes, while this might initially look fine, it's not valid because the two, three tree that corresponds with it is not a valid two, three tree. Next up, this one seems like it should be totally fine. It's just a binary search tree. There's nothing special happening. Uh, but this cannot occur in an LLRB because the equivalent to three tree, again, has one leaf that is distance one and two leaves that are distance two. Can't have that. In fact, the only one that was valid was this rightmost tree. Now this was a very hard problem, but I wanted you to try it out and hopefully now you have a good intuition for what a valid LLRB might look like. Now a somewhat less challenging but very important problem is, let's say we have a two, three tree as shown here, which has a bunch of keys in it. I want you to tell me what is the height of this co corresponding LLRB. Okay. And note, I've, I've made the three nodes very clear uh, by marking them in pink. So it turns out the equivalent LLRB would have height five. Okay, so I'm moving everything over to the left and I'm drawing the critical path, the longest path here in black from the root to one of its leaves. So remember that every three node is going to be two separate nodes in the LLRB that are connected by a red link. So for example, SU is S connected to U by a red link and QR is Q connected to R by a red link. And so if we look at this, uh, we see that the overall height is three black links and two red links. And more generally, an LLRB should be no more than around 2x the height of its 2-3 tree. So let's probe this last point a little more carefully. Let's say we have a 2-3 tree uh, of height h. Okay? So here it's of height 3. I want you to tell me what is the actual literal maximum height of the corresponding LLRB. And you give your, term, your answer in terms of h. Okay, so here, the max height would be 
H links, so we have H black links. And in the worst case, every one of these nodes along the critical path would be three nodes. So we'd have a, a red link inside of this three node, a red link inside of this three node, a red link inside of this three node, and a red link inside of this three node. So the total height would be H black links and H plus one red links, where these red links are inside the three nodes. Okay? So the overall height would be 2H plus one. So all of this we've said, I can summarize in two really concise properties. So one property of an LLRB for it to be valid is no node can have two red links. Otherwise it would be analogous to a four node, which we are not allowing. The other property we have is that every path from the root to a leaf has the same number of black links. Now, why is that? Well, I mean, you think about the, the analogy we were drawing here between LLRBs and two three trees and we'll always have the same number of black links to each of these leaf nodes. The only thing that can vary is the number of red links along the way. So for example, this path has no red links. This path has two red links uh, in the original tree. Uh, and so, uh, and, and we could see that. I mean, maybe another example here. What the heck? Tree. I don't know why that got cut off, but anyway, uh, this should say left-leaning red black tree. Uh, and so here, the two three tree, right? Every single leaf, is two links away from the root. And in the corresponding red black tree, every single leaf is two black links away from the root. So for example, A is two black links from the root. H is two black links from the root. L is two blacks from the root and so forth. The only thing that varies is the number of red links. And because no node has two red links touching it, uh, what we can say, as we just saw, is that the overall height can never be more than two H plus one. So now, knowing that, we can go back and do that hard LLRB valid problem just directly natively without having to think about the corresponding 2-3 tree. That is, this problem we did earlier here, where we looked at the equivalent 2-3 three trees and dismissed them as invalid, now we can do it natively uh, looking only at the 2-3 three trees. So here we could say, well, this is invalid. B has two red links. Uh, this tree, also invalid. It's not black balanced. C is two black links away. X is one black link away. Here, A is two black links away, X is one black link away. Uh, oh, and that one, that one's fine. Okay, so the reason this is so important is because if we actually have an LLRB, we know its height will be no more than around double the corresponding 2-3 tree. And since a 2-3 tree has height that is logarithmic in the, num in the number of items, LLRBs are also logarithmic in the number of items. So this raises one last and very important question, which is, where do LLRBs come from? Well, one thing we could do is actually implement a 2-3 tree and then convert it. But this defeats the whole point. Remember, one of the reasons I said we can't just use 2-3 trees is that they're hard to implement. So building an implementation that, that then needs to be converted into a red-black tree would be just silly, right? So instead, it turns out that what we can do, and, and we're gonna go through this in a lot of detail soon, is we can implement an LLRB as follows. We're going to insert into our binary search tree, and then we're going to use some number of rotations to maintain a one-to-one -one mapping. So we're going to do preventative maintenance on our tree to keep it from getting too tall, rather than trying to fix it all at once. And so in the coming videos, that will become very clear. But the bottom line and the most important lesson of this video is that if we have an LLRB, it will be no more than around double the height of the corresponding 2-3 tree, so it should also be log height. So construction of BST, sorry, construction of LLRBs will come next.